Okay, welcome back to the videos, and it's t-test time. Here we have a very simple data set for t-tests: two groups of cows with different glucose levels, or perhaps not. We're going to test that because these are normally distributed, have very even variances, something that we'll check later on. And we're simply going to take these data and copy them into GenStat. Right-click, copy into GenStat program, as always, spread, new, from clipboard, just press OK. And there are our data. Let's have a look at them. There they are. So we've got them in two columns. T-tests are all in the stats menu. So we go stats, statistical tests, and we find the T-tests right at the top. One, two sample T-tests here. So here we've got two samples. One sample is if we were looking at a difference from a particular mean and distribution. But so we're going to here. There's two samples. If we had a paired t-test, very similar process, I'd choose this one. But we're going for two sample t-test. Now here we could either have it in the format of two variates or one variate for a group factor. I've actually got two variates, two columns. I could have a factor column and a variate column, and that's sometimes when you see a more complex data set with lots of variate columns and just one factor column. But here we're going to put group one here by double click and double click group two to put it in this column. And we're just going to run that, have a look at the output. Okay, first things first, we've got a two sample t test and we're testing group one against group two. And straight up we have this the test for equality of sample variances. Now, this is not the t test, this is the so called f max test that you do beforehand. If you're on our research methods course before, you'd have done this on paper, but you test the variances of each group to see whether they are equal variants or unequal variants t-tests, which are different formulae. Now the computer takes care of that for you, but here we have the probability under the null hypothesis of equal variances, as in there is no significant difference between the variants of group 1 and group 2, and what is the chances of that being correct? Here the probability is 0.95, so we accept that null hypothesis, therefore this underneath refers to an equal variance t-test. So we have a nice summary of the data with this one. We don't get such a neat summary with the paired test, you have to work out the descriptors yourself. But in, with this one we have a nice comparison of means. Here's the n value for each one. We have a variance, a standard deviation and a standard error of the mean. So knock yourself out. I'll show you what we might do with those in a moment. But if you look at the two means, 71 versus 71.86 a variation or a standard deviation here of 5 means we're not expecting to see much of a difference and that's confirmed with here and this p-value here the 0 0.730 that is the p-value for this test not this one that is for the fmax test this is the p-value for the t-test that is a very common mistake made by students so here with a probability of 0.73 we are 73 percent confident in the null hypothesis that there is no difference that the group mean of group 1 is equal to mean of group 2. Therefore this is not a significant difference. As always we can simply highlight everything, right click copy, take it back to Excel and we can just paste it here and we can work with that. Now what we want for the graph is simply those, those values there, what the groups, rename it whatever we like, we want the means here, and we can either, for the error bars, use this figure here called the standard error of difference, 2.455. We can use that as an error bar for both, and that's a fairly traditional method. You can read up a bit more about standard error of difference if you want to, or we can use the individual standard deviations. I think students are generally happier with that. So I'm going to copy that over to there, put it separate from that, so you can see it. So we're going to draw a graph just using these values here. And I'm going to fast forward this bit because I'm going to do another video on drawing graphs. So here's my graph, nicely formatted. Um, we have the means from here, 71, 71.86. Of the standard deviations here and here with the t-bars. I've added the p-value, that's this probability value here. Remember that the one at the bottom 
is the test of null hypothesis that the mean of group 1 is equal to the mean of group 2. I repeat, it's not this one, which is telling you whether to use an equal or unequal variance t-test. Remember, that's automatic. So it's this p-value at the bottom goes on your graph. It's not a significant difference, as you can see, because the two blue bars are about the same size. All the axis labels are there, starts at 0, etc., etc. So I take this, and let's pretend I copy and paste it into Word. So there's my graph in Word. I've added the figure title in Word. That's good for two reasons. It's easier to format, and B, I can use that in my automatic list of tables or figures later on. Okay, so that's presenting it as a figure. If I want to present the same data as a table, and tables are better for putting more information in, the graph will highlight my most important data. So here's two table types. So I either use this top one. This top one, just this line here with the plasma glucose, relates to the data analysis we've just done. So group one was 71.0, group two, that 71.86 has been rounded up to 0.9. So we've done it to one decimal place. Here I have that standard error of difference from the printout that I showed you earlier. Um, and it's a fairly standard animal science, particularly BSES style table to present for a t-test. And then we have the p-value at the end. And then we could add in other variables. So it's a good way of adding lots of variables in the same table. Or, and I see this more often used, is the table one, Again, plasma glucose for two groups of cows. I've got my species in there. I've got all the detail in there that I need. But I am presenting means plus or minus the individual standard deviations here. Now, they happen to be the same for both groups, but they're presenting there. So 71.0 plus minus 5.55, 71.9 plus or minus 5.55, p-value 0.73. And in the title, I tell people I am presenting mean and standard deviations. I have my units here, 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 and again, I could just simply add extra variables underneath. If I look at a recent paper, so this one's in press, it's not even out yet, um, they have this table too. They were looking at different glucose measurements in horses undergoing different treatments. So I've got a placebo treatment and an EMP treatment, and again, they're presenting mean and standard deviation with the p-values, and they list them here. They have the footnotes again, HR for heart rate, RR for respiratory rate. So I would give them about a 7 out of 10 for this table, because it's nicely presented, it's got the lines, but it doesn't tell me what M1 and M2 are. It doesn't tell me what this is. All these are just printouts from their statistical printout and really need a full explanation because this table should stand alone from the text. So if you want to have a look at that, you'll find that Alves de Paul et al, 2019, there's the title, there's the DOI address, you can follow that up if you wish. But most of the details are on here, my only problem is with this variable or column at the start. Last thing to show you is perhaps the most important thing, this is the writing that goes in your dissertation. So here, in your methods section, it would say that data were confirmed as being normally distributed. However, you might do that with a, you might compare means and medians, you might just look at the residuals on a graph, or you might use something like a Shapiro Wilk test for normality. And then you analyzed it using a t test to assess the effect of cow group, so you'd be very specific on what your comparison is on whatever outcome variable is, on plasma glucose levels, and you might add in comma something else, comma something else, comma something else. That is the case. In your results section for this particular example, there was no significant difference in the plasma glucose levels in the two cow groups. And then here we present our t test statistics in full. We have T18. Now we have 10 cows in each group, and so we end up with 18 degrees of freedom. You'll see that on the table. And the t statistic is minus 0.35. It's only minus because the second group um, in the analysis is slightly lower than the first group. And then we have P is greater than, remember this way around is greater than, and that gives us a not significant variance. Yeah. If it was significant, it would be a less than sign this way around. Okay. If there was a significant difference in the groups, you would also give the effect size. So in this particular case, you simply say, 
the mean of group 1 was this, the mean of group 2 was this, and then in your discussion you say that although there was a significant difference between these means, you would say, is this important, because it was large enough, or although it's significant, it's not important because the two means are so close together. And that's how you would complete this result in your thesis. Good luck with that. Thank you for watching.